So this is example number four of section 16.6. .6. We are talking about rolling without slipping, and we will use also the concept of instantaneous center of rotation. So here we have a convoy belt that is moving to the right eight feet per second. And then we have, in top of that belt, we have a cylinder rotating contraclockwise two radians per second. And we are asked to find the velocity of the center of the disk and the velocity of B. I will use two different approaches. So the first approach using relative motion. So I will place a coordinate system attached to the disk in a point A, which origin in point A. And I will find the velocity of C using that system. So using a system attached to A, X, A, attached to the disks, right? I can find that the velocity of C is equals to the velocity of A plus our angular velocity of the disk cross the distance between A and C, right, which is R, and I do not have relative velocities, right? Since this, they, they tell us that the, this is rotating without sleeping, right? We can say that velocity of A is equal to velocity of A prime. Being A prime, one point, exactly the same point by over the convey belt. Since that is true, then I can say that the velocity of A, which is located in the disk, it has equal velocity to the belt, which is 8 feet per second. So the velocity of C will be 8i plus. I have two radians per second in K, and I have one feet in J. So finally, the velocity of C is equals 1, 8, K times, you remember, I, J, K, in this direction is positive. As I, I have K times J, that's negative I. So I have minus, minus 2I. So therefore, the velocity of C is equals to 6I as a vector, right? Be careful with the units, feet per second. So that's the first velocity we were asked to find. Found that one here. The second velocity is velocity of B, and it's very similar, right? So we do velocity of B will be equals to velocity of A plus omega cross R. Now B respect to A, and then we have that the velocity of B is equals to 8i plus 2k cross, now we have 2r, which is 2j. And then the velocity of b will be equals to 8i, 2 times 2 is 4, k times j is negative, so here we have a negative sign, minus 4i. Therefore, the velocity of b is equals to 4i feet per second. So that will be the solution using relative coordinate system, and this is a relative coordinate system, so I will have an inertia, so to be very precise, we have an inertia coordinate system, and then we have one fixed to the disk, and the one that we use is the one used to fix to the disk. The other solution that I want to present is the same solution, is other approach, right? Using the concept of instantaneous center of rotation. of rotation. So in this case, if we draw our cylinder, we know that the velocity of A, we already draw it, right, is 
a fifth second. And we know that we are rotating two radians per second. So, by using the concept of instantaneous center of rotation, we know that the velocity of A is equals to um, angular velocity times the distance between A to the instantaneous center of rotation. So since I have that and I have that, I will solve for the distance between A and its instantaneous center of rotation, and that gives me 8 over 2. So it's actually 4 feet. Since my instantaneous center of rotation, as you know, is always perpendicular to the velocity, this is 1, this is, the whole this is 2 feet, so I have to go 2 feet more, so it's 4 feet. So here is the instantaneous center of rotation at 4 feet. So this is 4 feet. 4 feet. Once I have located the instantaneous center of rotation, we know that all the velocities are uh, proportional and perpendicular to that instantaneous center of rotation. So we know that the velocity of point C, which is right here, will be like that, and the velocity of B will be like that, being this, the point A, point C, and point B. So we can calculate the other velocities we were asked to find. Velocity of C will be the distance between instantaneous center of rotation and C, and omega. And here we see that we have 4 minus 1, which is the radius of the, that disk. So it will be 3 feet times 2. Therefore, this is 6. So here we get that the velocity of C is equal to 6 um, feet per second. And, well, we do the same for B. The velocity of B will be the distance between the instantaneous center of rotation and B and the angular velocity. And we see if this is 4 and we subtract 2, this distance right here is 2, so we will have 2 times 2. This is 4 feet. This is feet per second, and this is feet per second. So finally, the velocity of B is 4 feet per second. So we got exactly the same results using, using either a, a relative coordinate system attached to the disk or using the concept of instantaneous center of rotation. This is a vectorial approach and this is a scalar approach.